I'm with Larry Martyr, creator of uh, Bean World, as you can see over there. <laughs> can you talk about um, where Bean World came from, how you came about to start doing it? Because it's been around for a long time. It's been around, it's been published. The first one came out 25 years ago in 1985. Yeah. So the stories came from who knows where. And, but I did know that I wanted to do complex stories with simple characters. Briefly, can you describe uh, what Bean World is about? Well, Bean World is almost impossible to describe. And so I always tell people that it's easier to read than it is to explain. Yeah. But having said all that, it's the most peculiar comic book experience. It's uh, about a tribe of characters that um, believe that they live in the center of their own little perfect universe. Uh -huh. It's got maps, it's got a glossary. They are, their neighbors are, uh, they're also their adversaries, but between the two tribes of characters, they maintain their food chain. Right. And which sounds kind of silly, so it's easier to read than it is to explain. Yeah, they have sort of a very stable economy. I mean, there's there's not really any such thing as poverty. Even among the, the hoi polloi who gamble all the time, you never really see hoi polloi who are destitute. You no, know? It, well, we, we as readers haven't seen them yet, but I know the stories of how that happens. But oh, okay. the truth of the matter is, it's in, even with the hoi polloi with their chow and the gamble, it's the ebb and flow of money. Right. And, um, and that's part of it, too, is that one of these tribes of characters, um, they use something called chow, and for that, they use that for money. The other characters consume it as food. So, so how does the chow replenish if one tribe of characters is it consuming it? The spiritual guardian of the beans, uh, in a which is kind of like a magic tree-like thing. And Where the uh, grandma, grandma pot, pot uh, yeah, and it drops. Grandma pot drops something that's called a sprout butt, which the beans then carry to the hoi polloi, steal their chow, run away with their chow, and leave the sprout butt with the hoi polloi, and the hoi polloi in turn turn it back into more chow. It is a very, very circular, closed system that's uh -huh. always being violated by something from the outside. Fair enough. I do. Uh, I know that that some of the beans go and like get chow, and other beans, you know, play music or yes, create the, art. Yeah. One of the trade-offs is that certain beans, uh, if they break out, it's called breaking out, and discover a way to make a contribution to the tribe that the tribe considers worth exchanging, going and getting them food, uh, they don't have to be, they don't have to hunt anymore. So we have an artist, right. Danish, we have musicians, and, um, and they contribute in a large way to the happiness of the beans, and in exchange for that they get uh, food. So how come none of the worker uh, beans ever feel, you know, like, like, oh, well, why don't those beans have to work? They get to have fun all day playing music or making art, you know. They, they Because they give them something to do when they're not hunting. So actually, and they just, they're very satisfied with that. Because Beanish gives them art, which is something to think about. The bean, the, the, the boomer band gives them music. Uh, so that they can have fun dancing and singing and, uh, uh, and otherwise idling, you know, their time away. And, uh, and then they do a lot of games and contests. They're very happy people. Are there any antecedents to Bean World? Because I'm not sure there's anything I've seen that's remotely like it. it it's Vaguely Crazy Cat. Right. Fair enough. Yeah. And and you're originally with Eclipse Comics, right? I was. Yeah. yeah. And I, I was remember with them through their entire entire run once I started. And then when Eclipse that's to, in order to do this you gotta give a contribution to the comic legal principles. Oh, okay, thanks. Yeah. Now in in one of the books there's actually a crossover with a bunch of Eclipse Comics characters. Totally. Or one Eclipse. of the bean characters, yeah. Do you do you ever feel like, you know, maybe you shouldn't have done that because now it dates the, the book and makes it not Sort of stand no, on its because, own. Um, that sequence in the hardcover reprints um, 
nobody even knows who those characters are. Right. And so, uh, if you actually, the sequence itself, I'm going to have to find it. Uh, is so obscure. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That, it's okay. That nobody even understands what it means, and so therefore, uh, people rarely ask or are worried about it or anything. And I, of course, can't people find usually that. are it. Uh, they're not confused and like, wait, this doesn't make any sense. Who are these characters? What do they have to do with Beam World? It's amazing. <laughs> Is there any chance? Oh, well, of, I can't find it. It's in here somewhere. <laughs> is there any chance of that total eclipse uh, material ever uh, no, coming out? I no. I can't imagine. Um, it's it's, a, it's this whole chapter of the one character's you know life that's now sort of disappeared. Yeah, but I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. And can you talk about how after after Eclipse went out of business, you didn't do a Bean World comics for a while, no, right? No, because I uh, spent six years as the executive director of Image Comics, and right. then eight years as uh, the president of McFarland Toys, so I got kind of sidetracked on the business end of things. And uh, how, how was that for you, doing business instead of doing comics? I, I mean, enjoyed it immensely, and yeah. I'm glad it's over. <laughs> yeah? And is... Um, these new Bean World books, well, here's the, this is the new one. These are old reprints. Um, are they out from Image? Who's publishing No, they're them? out from Dark Horse. So why are you... Yeah, they're go readily on. available everywhere. <laughs> so, I mean, on uh, through uh, Things From Another World, Amazon Books, right. Owls. But being that you were in charge of Image for a long time, why are these books not being come out with it from Image? Oh, because um, Image and I know each other too well. Yeah. And so, uh, it just seemed like the right thing to do. And actually, I want, no, the truth of the matter is I wanted it to be uh, uh, edited by Diana Schutz, who's an uh -huh. and she's an old, old friend. She's a great editor, and that's what I want. Fair enough. And how, what do you think of the direction that Image Comics has gone since you left and how the company's I think doing? Image Comics is on a roll. Uh -huh. And I think that, uh, I mean, they've had their ups and downs. They had their ups and downs when I was there. Yeah. But uh, right now, I think with uh, things like Choker uh -huh. and Chew and some of the books that are coming out from Jim Valentino's imprint, I think that it's uh, good stuff. Awesome. And will there be a, another Bean World book anytime yep, in the book future? Four is, uh, I'm working on it now, and then there'll be a book five. And so whenever it's, going. I'm whenever just it's finished? Going and going and going. Sometime in 2011, probably towards the end of the year, the book will come back. Excellent.